Hello, uh, what language do we use? Uh, if we look over uh, the um, uh, sort of recent articles and so on about migration and about migrants, and what we get is the idea of a siege, an invasion across Europe by migrants. Um, this may suggest intoleration or xenophobia. Should we be using the term refugee? Um, which term is appropriate? I went back to the UN definition, and the UN definition of a migrant is a person who lives temporarily or permanently uh, in a country uh, where they might have social ties, but where they were not born. So they've moved from a place where they were born to another country. Now, if we take this definition, uh, it means that among the people that we would define today as migrants would be Pope Francis, Pope Benedict, Prince Harry, um, I suppose even British politicians like Lord Dubbs, obviously, uh, would be a migrant. Our present Prime Minister, uh, Boris, was born in the United States, in New York, so he is a migrant. Uh, Rishi Sunak's wife, we know, um, of course, she was born in India and she's struggling at the moment with her non-DOM status. Um, she would be a migrant. Of course, Rishi Sunak, I, I have a lot of, um, I, I, I know I give the impression that I don't like Rishi Sunak. In fact, I've got a lot of sympathy for Rishi Sunak. He and I share the same birthday. Um, now, uh, along with Edward Lear, the man of the owl and the pussycat fame, uh, then there's the education minister, uh, Nadim uh, Zahawi. Uh, he was born in Baghdad, in Iraq. Uh, so he is a migrant. So being a migrant on this definition, on the UN definition, which I think is fairly, um, it, 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 it's fairly clear, um, fairly reasonable, that would make no sense uh, when it comes to uh, um, sort of uh, uh, writing and, um, and uh, uh, claims like that of Katie Hopkins, if you remember, when she compared migrants to cockroaches. Um, so, uh, yeah, if, 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 if we were to take that idea, um, I, don't, I don't think we could possibly call all the people I've cited um, uh, migrants on Katie Hopkins. Uh, if we take Katie Hopkins' criteria... Even if they have been having lots of parties during lockdown, I don't see Boris Johnson as a cockroach. So it's clear, it's clear to, um, to me that the term migrant has gone through some sort of evolution very recently. And uh, the term migrant has shifted from the definition in the UN where it's about somebody who moves, where it's about a person uh, who has migrated from one country, from the country of their birth, to uh, another country. And it's, uh, this, this word has changed from that to something that means barely human. The term migrant has become a term of abuse. And the distinction between migrant and refugee um, I think is spurious about is spurious. It's about whether or not one wants to be abusive or one or one wants to be legal. Refugee must always be a legal term. I think a refugee is somebody who has. Um, actually, even there, it's unclear. A refugee is somebody who has appealed for refuge in another country. I don't think a refugee is somebody who has been granted refuge in another country. If somebody is granted refuge in another country, then they become a citizen of that country or a subject of Her Majesty or whatever. Refugee is about somebody who is applying for refuge. A migrant is somebody who actually would never lose that name. A migrant is somebody who has come from another country. But today, as I say, it's become a term of abuse. So the difference between migrant and refugee, I think, is purely semantic. Um, and the distinction uh, is something that, um, that we would have to wrestle with the dictionary to um, work out. Language evolves and um, terms like refugee, uh, refuge, help, hospitality, um, support. Uh, these terms have been twisted and abused 
by the media and by politicians to their own end and possibly to distract from the chaos and the nonsense which is being created at home. So let's just apply this very quickly because this video is getting a bit long. Apply this very quickly to the Home Office. Um, we can say, ah yes, there's so many people crossing the channel and we need to address that issue. Well, paying money to send some of those people, not all, some of those people to Rwanda is not actually addressing the issue and nor is it going to stop the flood of people coming into this country. The flood, even I'm using prejudice language there. Uh, the only way that we can deal with this problem is to process people who apply for refugee status, people who apply for refuge, we need to process them quicker. At the moment, because the Home Office doesn't have enough staff, because those staff that it does have are busy concocting spurious plans, uh, like some sort of uh, like some sort of maniacal um, witch-like brew presided over by, uh, by, by, by the denizens of, um, of Pretty Patel and her, and, 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 and um, you know, um, people who probably, who probably escaped from a production of Macbeth. Um, I, 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 I don't understand. The real money that we should be investing should be in the Home Office, so the Home Office works effectively. If anybody's tried to get their passport renewed or tried to have any dealings with the Home Office, they will know that this is a ministry which has been failing for years and years and years. So instead of trying to pass the buck and blame um, people who are victims of people smugglers, people who are in need of help, instead of blaming those and transporting those to a third country, we should, in fact, be getting our own house in order and sorting out these ministries and uh, the way they work so that they work effectively.